buy some spray paint? Fresh out the truck. Real deal. Authentic. German. Just don't tell anyone where you got it. Oh, uh, yeah. Finally got them in. Man, we've been sitting on these for so long. I've been wanting to do reviews so bad. It was like an itch I couldn't scratch. A zit I couldn't reach. Yeah, this is that bad. So what's the deal with Montana Black anyways? That's the question that people are asking, right? So first of all, what Montana Black is a nitro, they call it nitro combo, which leads me to believe it's probably just a nitrocellulose formula, similar to the Molotov Premium, which means it's quick drying, it'll work really well in cold weather, and it'll stick really good to metal. Sounds a lot like the Molotov. Now Montana refers this to as their high pressure paint. I've already used it with thin tips, and I think it's more like the flame orange, it's more high output, but you can tone it down with thin tips. These cans come stock with an orange dot black hood cap, which looks to me like a high output cap. Yeah, it's got a cut stem slot, so it's more of a fat cap style. So like I said, this is gonna be a, a quote unquote high pressure can, high output, whatever you wanna call it. It gets the business done which explains why it's very popular with the street bomber, train bomber, you know, the active people who like to get in, get out, get done quickly. This might be right up your alley. Now, while this does come with a quite broad array of colors, I think it's 187 now, doesn't quite have the range of the Montana Gold Line. Also, it doesn't have the plethora of flesh tones and natural greens and browns that you will find in the Gold Line. That said, 187 is a lot of shades, so I'm sure you will not be left out. So why don't we take a look at how this stuff sprays? Because that's what you want to see. Like I said, this can comes with an orange dot style cap. So why don't we do just a couple quick dots and sprays just to see how it is. Oh, don't forget, there's a donut in there. Don't forget about the donut, guys. Don't forget about the donut like I did. <laughs> oh, you better shake your cans. It's a matter of life and death, people. You have to shake your hands. <laughs> do a couple, let's do a couple quick sprays here. First, we'll do the two inch spray. Woo, very high output. All right, let's do the six inch spray. Woo, very high output. Very nice. Ooh, I like it. All right, let's do a little fade. Wow, that's a huge fade. Did you guys see that? Oh my goodness. Oh man, this flares wonderfully. Let me do a little flare up. Fantastic. Let me paint a star really quickly here. Very high output. If you're someone who needs to get in and out of somewhere quickly, this might be the paint for you. That's for sure. Woo. Okay, now like I said, they, they call this a high output or high pressure paint, but you can really tame it with thin tips. So I got, a, I got a level one cap right here. Let's do a couple quick lines with it. As you can see, it's almost Montana gold level skinny, really. Quite good. All right, let's do the old Ruli Roo here with the ruler. I got a two inch with the level one, and let's do six inch with the level one. All right, as you can see here, we got the two inch, the two inch, with the stock fat tip and then with the level one and then we got the six inch with the level one and the six inch with the stock fat tip. As you can see, six is greater than two. So that was a lot of fun doing some quick little test sprays. As you can see, you can do quite a bit with these cans, whether it be fat, skinny, or anything in the middle really. It's a good all around can. And as it says, it is high output, so it's capable of, of uh, quick action when needed. Let's paint something fun. Let's, let's, let's do a little piece, a quickie, a quick little three letter, just to see how it works in action. And uh, hopefully it gives you guys an idea of how it is in real life. So I'm gonna do a three color fade, and we're gonna see how they work. So again, three colors, three letters, simple little piece for a young homie named Matt. All right, now I know some people are gonna be very triggered by that. Yes, he does write Mac. I know El Mac. I know Mac Crew. We'll talk about that later in the video. Definitely a, definitely a come to my office kind of moment for the young lads. And also a meet me at the bar kind of moment for the old lads. <laughs> 
What isn't a name anyways? It's what you do with the name that matters. But we'll talk about that later. Let's get painting. All right, dope. Let's go ahead and start outlining it. I got this uh, royal blue. Thought it'd be a good outline color. So go ahead and start lacing that in. All right, let's do the 3D. I'm just gonna drop a line down. Drop lines down like that and then just make the 3D come over like that. All right guys, this looks terrible, right? I did it on purpose to illustrate a point. This is what happens when you don't shake your cans. You notice the color difference here? This is the same color, but I didn't shake it and I just went ahead and sp started spraying on there. And as you can see, the color is not the same. And, and the reason why is the can's not properly agitated. And uh, you know, you don't want that to happen. So make sure you shake your cans. See, now it looks much better, right? And again, this is not a fault of the paint. Improper agitation. All right, let's go ahead and start adding some fill accents. This is a great, this is a great part where you can just go ahead and cut back on some stuff to make your lines a little bit more sharp, you feel me? And then you can kind of add a little bubble to it, like that. Whatever you want to do, really. It's all up to you. And this will help sharpen up your edges. and give it more depth. All right, dope. So I got this scrap can of cool cologne. And this is a this is something you can always do with your scrap cans. It's just use them for your little your little doodads, your little fill elements and whatnot. All right, let's do some little angular bits here. I'm using a can of bubble bath, which is like a mauveish mauveish looking magenta, magenta mauve, I guess. Really cool shade. All right, dope. So I think we got our fill and everything done. I think it looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and do some 3D accents and I wanna do something a little bit different because I think it was in one of my YouTube videos or one of my Instagram videos, someone had critiqued my 3D effects and said they were incorrect. That I was supposed to use some type of blocking or a 3D highlight or whatnot. And I'd like to remind some of you guys where all this stuff goes back to because your 3D can be whatever you want it to be. If you want to put a bunch of yin yangs in your 3D or a bunch of peace signs, it doesn't matter, man. Look, look at this. <clears throat> in case you haven't seen this book, it's Subway Art by Henry Chiffon and Martha Cooper. And uh, here's some proto graffiti right here. Looks like, uh, is that showing up right there? Let's see if the sun's like. Look at this, look at these subway trains right here. On the top right here, you have Peanut, and on the bottom, you have King 2. Look at their fills. King 2 is putting dots, a bunch of dots, and Peanut has dots, stars, weird styrations, all kinds of stuff going on there. You could 3D fill however you want. There is no rule that tells you you need to do a shine or blocking or whatever. It goes back to the beginning. Also, I'd like to point out that there is a King 2 right here. That means there was a King 1. And there's also a King 157. But these guys all made their names in their own ways. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? All these rules. It's like, I know who King 157 is. If there was a kid writing King in Tulare, California, that obviously isn't King 157, I would know the difference. That's part of knowing your culture. I mean, you shouldn't write King. Obviously, it's kind of a used up name. And there's only one King 157. And he's a, he's a god of graffiti, basically. But nevertheless, the, pedant, the, the pedantic nature of some writers is just embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. So here we go. I got this can of Monster, by the way. This is the Montana Black and the Monster. And it is, frankly, it's a god tier purple. It's fucking gorgeous. So I'm just gonna put some dots. Whatever I want, really. Yeah, you might not like it, I don't care. 
That's the whole point. You can do whatever you want. It's for you. Graffiti's whatever you want it to be, baby. All right, now we got a funky fill on our 3D. Like I said, it can be whatever you want it to be. Maybe someone doesn't like this, I don't know. I don't care, it's what I wanna do, and it should be what you want to do. That's what graffiti is. Not what the other guys tell you what it is. It's what's in your heart. So anyways, that's my funky fill in my 3D. Again, you could do yin yangs, you could do peace signs, you can do whatever you want. You can do, you can do guys doing an ollie on a skateboard, I don't care. Make it yours. Now, that said, doing 3D highlights and blocking does have a reason. You know, it, it delineates a, a shadow or it creates a, a, a highlight effect, you know. So there are reasons to use those. But it doesn't mean you only have to do that or aspire to do that. It can be whatever you want. Whatever you want. Remember, you are the master of your own destiny. You are the one who has control of your artistic vision. Not your peers. All right. Let's finish up this toy piece. All right, let's do some shines, guys. And there it is, guys. I think it came out pretty good. Um, yeah, I could have made the top of the C a little bit thicker, but whatever. I mean, it was just a quickie little three letter just to see what the paint's like. Um, the color palette's nice, big fan of that. So why don't we go to a quick little outro, we'll talk about the paint, and then we'll talk about names and all that good stuff. Oh, hey, what's going on, guys? How y'all doing up there? So, that was a lot of fun. I, I, I really got it, I really enjoyed my opportunity to, you know, test out the Montana Blacks and see, get over there, chart pack, and see what they're all about. <laughs> Uh, let me do a quick little rundown of some of the colors so you guys can see what I used. Um, I used Royal Blue. I used Bubble Bath. Uh, I used Masala. I used, oh, I used Melon Yellow. Not to be confused with the Molotov Melon Yellow, but they're very similar. Uh, and then I also used the Indian Spice and Surgical. Oh man, I love this color. And of course, Monster, which is dank. This Monster Purple. Oh! Lordy, it is awesome. So, a couple quick thoughts. The the royal blue covered excellent, and it's if you're looking for a good solid blue, look no further, friends. It's fantastic. The bubble bath, excellent coverage. Did a little bit of overspray. You know what I mean? It's a little bit on the dusty side, so just keep that in mind. But it covered very good for a, a light purple. It's really really good stuff. Highly recommend it. Uh, the masala in the Indian spice. The masala covered really good. It definitely reminded me of that Montana. Montana had that curry color. Forgive me if Montana, Spanish Montana had that curry color. <laughs> Remember in the old hardcore cans, back when the hardcore cans actually were good before they switched them? Go back to the old can, Montana Spanish. Um, anyways, so <laughs> this reminds me a lot of that color. I don't remember what it was called. Someone can fill me in in the comments. You know what I'm talking about. It was that really cool curry color. This reminds me a lot of it. Bottom line, buy it, buy it, buy it. Melon Yellow did pretty good. It didn't cover as good as I expected. Well, maybe it didn't cover as good as I expected because it's very much like the one in the Montana Gold video. These kind of medium oranges often don't cover very good. I don't know why the light ones, I don't know. They just don't cover that good. But it was okay. You know, if you have a buffed out wall, you shouldn't have any issues. So I don't think you should worry about it. The Indian Spice, surprisingly, I wasn't very happy with it. At first, I thought I was going to like it. It, it covers. When you're going over stuff, it, you can see it covering, but it's not hiding what's underneath it. You feel me? I was trying to cut back over the blue with this, and it was it was a lot of work. It wasn't a lot of fun, to tell you. This one cut it over the blue beautifully. This didn't cover as well, but it did cut over the blue pretty nicely. This one, this Indian Spice, they need to go back to the drawing board on the Indian Spice because it did not cover well at all. Very disappointed. Surgical, oh my God. This is literally like surgical gloves, color green. It's phenomenal. You have to have this. If you don't, I'll be very disappointed in you. Get surgical, just do it. And the monster, this is like, 
It's like the perfect safety purple and it covers like the Dickens. I did all the dots in the 3D with this. I, I'm definitely adding that to my arsenal. So all in all, I liked almost all of them. This was a little on the dusty side, but it covered very nicely and the shade is phenomenal. Um, the Indian Spice, not so much. Now, if you're just doing a big block of fill with it, it's probably fine. Probably be fine for that. But if you have to cut back over a darker color, you'll be a little disappointed. I mean, you, you will. That's just the fact about things. So that's that's my rundown on those. The Montana Blacks, they definitely are in the same field of capabilities as the Molotov Premiums. Um, some colors cover better than others, but if you've used the Molotov Premium line, you would know that as well. Some Molotov color, colors do cover better than others. Um, very high quality. I don't know how it holds up as far as UV protection. There's a lot of speculation out there, but I've yet to see any scientific proof that this is as good as the Molotov or the Molotov is better. I will tell you this, that the Molotov is good on its own. I've used it in numerous circumstances in my personal experience. I guess it's anecdotal experience, but I do know Molotov does grind their pigments down to a very, very fine amount, and that does create a better UV barrier. I don't know if Montana does that, so until I find out, Jury's out on that one. Although I will be, uh, I will be moving to a part of the country where the sun is much hotter soon. So when I do, we'll be doing some of our own UV testing on our own. Um, now about names. This is a big controversial thing because um, I, be, I get a lot of name requests, you know, from kids like, "Yo, can you hit me up? Can you hit up my homie? Can you hit up my brother, my sister, my mother?" You know, and, and you know me, I'm always happy to do that. You know, oftentimes though, oftentimes these kids are using names of famous writers. But what can you do? I mean, graffiti's been around since, you know, modern graffiti, as we know it, has been around since the, the mid to late 60s. Hitting up goes to about the late 60s, I'd say. Subway painting, early 70s to the early 80s, you know, until the street bombing era of the, the mid 80s to the 90s and the all around everything that we have today you know so it's been around for a while there's been a lot of famous writers names that have been used there was one circumstance that i, I remember recently was a, a young writer from australia who wrote mare like nightmare and you know i'll put up some flicks of his stuff right now while i'm talking and you know he's very talented he's got um he's got a few different styles that he's using and he's doing a lot of different colors and as you can see he's, you know, he's doing his thing but again mare is a famous old school subway painter from new york you know, and then uh, there was some controversy. I think OG Slick had commented on his Instagram about it. I grew up watching Slick paint, you know, for me. I, I, I can understand his contention about the situation and a lot of old writers. I know, I understand how they feel. Um, but, you know, the cat's out of the bag. You know, there's so many kids writing famous writers' names now. I don't even know what we could even do about it. Um, you know, and, and that's why whenever kids ask me to hit up a name, I don't really research it or, or you know, I just can't, I can't know if every, every name is taken or not. And, and they, frankly, they all are. And that's why you see kids using leet speak or using really weird words for their names, you know, like writing Costco, you know, I mean, but then you got like writers in Europe, like, um, you know, that, that ignorant style writer guy, he writes crink, you know? but it's like, it's kind of like a clown, you know what I mean? He's like kind of clowning with it, you know, and, and it's like, he owns it, you know? And that's the thing. It's like, if you own the name, what can you do, you know? And I think a lot of this also has to do with a lot of old writers who who are a little bit uh, shake on shaky ground with the new technology and stuff. This also goes to the whole internet writer thing because they don't like that either, you know? And uh, they're like, oh, kids just learn stuff from YouTube videos. Oh, they can buy a marker. Yeah, they, they're they using the name of an old school writer, you know? And it's like, hey, get off my lawn, all right? Get off my lawn. You know, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> You hear me? I'm, I'm like I'm like the monkey in the middle, you know. I'm just here to talk about the love of graffiti, world peace through graffiti, baby. That's all I care about, um, and, and that's why I don't really like to write any specific name. Yet you guys keep calling me Spur, and I told you at the beginning I don't write Spur. Stop! Stop calling me Spur. <laughs> it was an experiment, uh, not a very good one apparently, but. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys a lot. But, you know, here's the thing. I understand old school writers 
having a contention about this guy, Mayor. But he's not in the U.S. He's in Australia. It's a big world out there, you know. And I'm sure there's probably a, someone writing Mayor in Croatia right now, you know. And it's like the whole thing with Mac. I'm writing this kid who writes Mac. But he's the old school Mac from Scotland, okay? He's from Scotland. He's not from Germany like Mac Crew. And he's not El Mac, which is a whole different guy, you know. He's the original Mac Daddy from Scotland. It's a big world. So what do we do? Nothing. <laughs> There's really nothing you can do. You know, I mean, it's like the King thing, you know. I, I, you can go, okay, wherever you are in California right now, you go to the AMPM that I know is down the street from your house, because I know there's an AMPM down the street from your house. Go to that AMPM, go into the bathroom. I guarantee you there's someone who wrote King on the wall and they drew a big ass crown with a Sharpie. You know that's in that bathroom. <laughs> No, it is. So here's what you got to do is you just got to stand out. You got to push your name. You got to stand out and you got to be different in how you do your art and how you present yourself and who you are. Just like what I've been showing you guys. That's what it's all about. Being you. Showing you. Doing stuff. <laughs> all right, guys. I got to go. It's time for me to get lunch. I'm really hungry and um, I want a hamburger. But I love you guys. Be sure to comment what you think. Like I said, you know, what's in a name? Own your name. Play the game. I'll see you guys later. Oh, 206-365-4083. Artprimo.com. Specialize in one thing. No, you really can't support yourself for all our kids. Specialize in one thing. Red ball. No, you really can't support yourself for all our kids. Specialize in one thing. Red ball. A hot dog. No, you really can't support yourself for all our kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah.